My name is Christina Harbour and I'm the Senior Director of Education at the American Institute of Steel Construction. When I was in high school, I was interested in construction. No one in my family does anything related to construction. There is something kind of exciting about building roads or bridges or buildings that you could actually see. So I decided to go to school for civil engineering. I really liked it, it was really challenging, and so that's how I got into structural engineering. Uh, there was one job in particular, it was a new office building. The owner was thinking about putting a gym uh, at the mezzanine level. And at the time, I, I had no idea that buildings could have vibration issues, so I was assigned to check that floor for vibration. I used an AISC design guide, design guide 11, uh, on vibration. Certain uh, movement on the floor, certain, um, I guess, impulses into the floor could cause uh, vibration. And one of those things is gyms, like aerobics classes, specifically uh, dancing, people walking at a certain pace uh, can kind of excite the floor into a way that creates a lot of vibration. Depending on the layout of the floor framing, uh, the, the mass of the floor, it can affect the kind of the vib vibration behavior. And not only can that area of the floor have a vibration problem, but it could be several floors above or several floors below or in a different part of the building. So it's really important to you know, check the building for vibration. Now it's it's not a, a like a limit state where the you know the building is going to be unsafe. There's the building is not going to uh, collapse, but the occupants in the building uh, could just feel really nervous. You know, it's really unsettling to have the, the, the floor shaking. So for that particular project, I, I checked the floor. There was no way to make that gym work on that floor, unfortunately. So they ended up uh, building that on grade. Stairs also tend to have vibration issues and that you have to check. The AISC design guide is just, it was really the, the only resource out there to help you design for vibration. There's really, for the, the average engineer that just that's designing something, there's no way you can come up with it on your own. It took a lot of research to put that design guide together. When I first started AISC, I was hired as the senior engineer for continuing education. And I put together webinars, mostly for uh, design engineers. You don't learn everything you need to learn in school. There's a lot of on the job learning that has to happen. I used my experience as a design engineer to really think about what, what do people want to learn about? What do people need to know more about? The first thing I would recommend doing if you run into a problem you're not familiar with is check out what the AISC resources are. Once you find a design guide that you might need to use, design guides are just resources that are not part of the code, but they're just resources that you can use um, in areas that you, know, you, you may need more information. Uh, there's a variety of topics. Um, from base plates to, and anchor rods to constructability, stainless steel, there's, there's so many topics. Uh, one of my favorite ones is the rehab and retrofit one. I did work on a lot of historic structures and you know the steel was different back then, the properties were different, the shapes were different. And so you might need to um, see you know, what the properties were for this, the section you, you come across in the field. So you can crack open the design guide and, and that one has a lot of tables in it where you can see section properties. You can read about uh, maybe testing for material properties. So a lot of our resources are free for members and student membership is free. So I always recommend to students that, that they sign up for, for an AISC membership. Students are really familiar with the steel manual. People like to call it the steel Bible or you know whatever. So within the, the manual, um, there's the, the actual manual tables and manual information, and then there is the specification. The specification is what you need to follow to design in, in structural steel. And that would be the part that is adopted by your local building code, so that's what you have to do. And then there's a commentary in there, and that just provides a little bit of background information on what's in the specification. It also contains resources on maybe some of the research that went behind the specification.
for the steel construction manual, we do publish a lot of uh, design examples in a separate document. It is actually a really good resource for students that want examples. Basically, every part of our specification, you can find a little, little design example, whether it be connection design or composite beam design, uh, you can find an example. If you go to the publication section of the AISC website, you know, you log in and you're a student, you can download all of these things for free. One thing that I wasn't aware of until I worked at AISC was the Code of Standard Practice. That's its own document, kind of like the construction and legal requirements, contract requirements uh, for constructing a, a steel building. It lays out things like construction tolerances, uh, kind of who's responsible for what. A lot of that comes in handy when a building is under construction. It's just a lot of practical information and a lot of questions that we receive at AISC, the answer is, it's in the code of standard practice. So that's something I always recommend people take a look at and just be aware of. And then there's the seismic design manual. So that also is set up similar to uh, the steel construction manual. There's the seismic provisions, and that's kind of like your, your legal document. That's what you have to follow uh, for the, the building code. It also has a commentary, and then it also has a manual portion with tables. Um, it also has design examples as well. AISC offers a lot of webinars. We do at least one a month. We have recorded webinars that you can watch at any time on our website, and they're all sorts of topics. We have topics on connection design, that's always very popular, structural analysis for steel, stability, a lot of yeah, uh, bridge design topics. We also have a YouTube channel, um, a lot of educational content there as well. We try to remind students, like, this stuff is out there, but sometimes if you can't use it right away, it's not very meaningful. You'll get to a point where you will need to know it and, you know, just download them and keep them for later.